Good morning and welcome back to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the Q&A portion of the show. If you missed the main show, click up here. You can watch that. That'll be the portion of the show that was the main show. I already said that. We're talking about this lens, the Lumix Panasonic Lumix Leica 200mm f2.8 lens for your fancy dancy Lumix camera. And we've just looked at a bunch of pictures, went through all the features of it, and now we're going to answer any questions that might have come up during the show. We're also going to talk about the just announced, let me pull up the web page here, a uh, firmware update coming for the GH5, GH5S, and G9. So there's a lot going on here. Let me just pull this up. I Again, I did not have time to prep for this. This is a big surprise for me, but I want to go through some of the quick things in here that I caught scamming through it, uh, skinning through it. This is broken out into three separate things for the three different cameras. I believe these functions are largely the same, so we're just going to quickly go through uh, the first one, which is for the GH5. Um, addition of these new photo styles, the photo style L Monochrome D, which is this really cool, I've only seen samples, I haven't played with it myself yet, it's this really cool monochrome film-like profile. So if you like the idea, if you like shooting black and white film, this gives you a very black and white film-like profile. And remember, if you're shooting RAW plus JPEG, then you get to have that black and white, greeny, cool JPEG. Plus, you have the raw file. You can go back to it at any time if you want to do a completely different version of black and white or you want to make it color because it is color. You have that. So uh, when this was announced with the GX9, is that right? I think that's right. I think that's the right model number. Um, I think that's the right model number. Anyway, that was recently uh, announced with another camera and that is now being brought to these three cameras, which is great. I'm actually excited for that because I've been looking forward to playing with that and I haven't yet played with it. Uh, so that's you know, it has a grainy mode that's part of that uh, part of that that um, black and white look. Um, additional features added focus ring lock. Okay, cool. Added function allow you to change the settings while pressing white balance settings. A lot of these are going to take some digging into, which I'll do at another time. Dial was added to operation lock settings to the custom menu. That's handy. Uh, the live view boost added to make it easier to check subjects displayed on the monitor when shooting dark places. That's really handy. So if you're in the dark and you just want to brighten up your screen just so you can see what the heck's going on. Super handy there. Uh, adding the night mode. Oh, that's the red mode. Okay, cool. Adding the night mode to the other cameras. Awesome. Added a menu to turn off the power indicator. Oh, thank you. Added a menu to turn off the power indicator lamp on the wireless connection lamp in the setup menu. That means if you have a G9, GH5S, maybe it's on both of them. You know when, you're, when you use the wireless functionality, there's this bright blue LED on here. And it's bright. And let me tell you, when I first got the GH5, I was out playing with that, shooting at night. You can read by that light. It is a bright blue light. And it's just, if you want to have your wireless thing connected, your wireless capability um, on all the time, connected to your phone, so you get the GPS logging, which is an awesome thing to be able to do, that light is so bright. So on the newer cameras, you could turn it off. On the GH5, you could not. They've added that in. Thank you, Panasonic. I'm very happy for that. Then we get into an interesting one. Look at this. Main performance improvement, um, improving the autofocus speed specifically at 180 degrees, which tells us that the whole thing of when you get under 180 degrees shutter was probably a better autofocus performance. That's probably true. It was true. I totally verified that. Um, I've been shooting pretty much nonstop at 179 degrees since that um, revelation came out. And now it looks like it's being addressed, so we should not have that problem. We should have faster focusing at 180 degrees. It'll be interesting to see what else is included in this. If there's any other, any other improvements, uh, we will certainly check that out and see. Um, fortunately, I have two GH5s, so I will be able to do a side-by-side -side comparison, um, update one of them, not update the other, and see what kind of differences we have, which is cool. So yay on that. Uh, let's see if there's anything else worth pointing out in here. So now we're getting into, that's a little thing. So I, I, we'll go through all these little ones later on, but there's a lot of other m small minor updates. G9, same thing, the photo styles with the grainy mode, um, focus ring lock, so same thing. I think it's largely going to be the same um, autofocus improvement. They don't have the degree shutter, uh, shutter angles function on there, but you do have it on the uh, GH5S. So I'm assuming we're going to find that same thing here. Yep, here we go. Autofocus speed at 180 degrees is improved on the GH5S. The same photo style modes, the same focus ring locks. Yeah, yeah, basically the same thing. It's essentially the same update going out to all three cameras. So that is that is awesome. Oh, and on here, check this out. On the uh, GH5S vector scope can be disabled on the screen during the white balance setting. I saw something about vector scope being enabled during white balance. Anyway, so some options there as well. Okay, so that's that. Great. Now let's get into the questions, shall we? Let's see what's going on in 
the Q&A. People saying th happy two-year anniversary. Thank you. This is two years the show has been going on. I can't believe it. Good morning, Jake. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Burns Tech, you like physical switches for something, especially for options that are used often. Absolutely. Physical switches are fantastic. Um, I don't know. You might have been referring to when I was the... Um, the optical stabilization switch or the autofocus switch. I don't, I was saying I don't use the autofocus switch on the lens very often, if at all, because it is a mechanical switch on the camera here, which I use all the time. But the optical stabilization being on a switch to turn on and off is definitely a nice thing to have. Sir says, you seem to be using a battery grip on, on tripod as you have the QR plate attached. Um, oh, you mean this thing? Well, that was just for the show. Uh, do you have any issues with quarter inch hole being off the lens axis on the grip? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so this quarter inch hole is saying is off axis. It's slightly off, I guess, from the center point. I have, um, other than for a quick shot, I don't know that I've ever actually really used this camera with this grip on a tripod. Um, so I, the answer is no, but because I haven't really tried, I haven't really done much with it that way. But if I was going to use this lens, of course, I would put the tripod, put this on and put the tripod plate on this attachment. But no, I haven't had an issue with it, but I haven't been using it enough to really tell you whether it's an issue. So sorry, that's, I can't really give you a good answer on there. Bird's Tech, I absolutely try to never just pull power for any device. Okay, so now we're talking about when, uh, with the lens, I was saying that once you program the memory function in there, you have to turn the camera off to save that memory setting to the lens. Burns is saying, I absolutely try to never just pull power for any device, always attempt to power down properly. It makes me cringe to just pull the plug. Yeah, that, that goes for anything. Whether you're talking about your camera or your vacuum cleaner, it's better to power it down properly and then unplug. But you know, sometimes things happen, sometimes you can't, sometimes it's just, it's just the way it is. But um, just a reminder, anything that you have set in the camera, any modes, any custom settings, anything, if you just yank the power by either popping the battery out or if it's connected to AC, just pulling out of the wall, those settings will not be saved. You have to power the camera down. And I know this from experience because my close-up camera here and actually my above camera here are both old GH4s. If I'm, and these are all plugged in, hardwired into the AC, all of which is on a system that I can turn on and off with a touch of, if I push this button, we go dark. We won't push that button. But it includes turning those cameras off. And so if I make a change to the camera, I need to remember to power the camera off and back on to save that. Otherwise, next time I boot up my room, those settings won't be there. So there you go. Uh, Tony Hill, hi from London. Hello, back in London. Slightly off subject, no such thing. But have you heard about the new firmware update? Oh, look that. <laughs> there you go. We just talked about the firmware update. Thank you. Uh, SRO Digital, I do love the punch in... Punch in facility, both during manual focus and autofocus for checking focus accuracy, a great selling point for mirrorless. That's the, yeah, that's when we're talking about being able to zoom in. That's the function that I've programmed the function button for on this lens to be able to punch way in and really, really check critical focus. Super, super useful when there's other stuff that it, in between your subject and the camera that it might be focusing on and you might not be able to tell unless you look really, really closely. Kevin Hollick says, very nice cheetah pics. Thank you. Love the close-up composition. The detail of the lens is super nice. That it is. I'm definitely in the market for telephoto lens after they're getting the Miticon F0.95 for filmmaking. Isn't that an awesome lens? I love that lens. It is very, very nice. Yeah, this is gorgeous. I've shot some video with it. Incidentally, when I was on the the work, the, the whatever, couple days adventure with um, Sean and Zach and Paul, we I did shoot a bunch of video. I will edit that. I I have another project I have to finish first, and I'm trying to be disciplined. I'm not going to start this fun project until I finish this other one first. I'm trying to be a good boy here. So I will um, I will get to that. Well, look at this. This is kind of nice. Let me pull this thing up. Someone, Jim Williams, just popped up a big old super chat for 10 quid. Thank you, my friend. That is very, very kind of you. That's like a thousand US dollars. Exchange rate's really good these days. Uh, let's see here. Jim says, hi, great value as always. Awesome. Came into the video at the back end, so apologize if I already mentioned. Is the teleconverter specific to the 200? I have the Panty 100 to 400 and oh, so tempted. Um, I believe that it is. Let's, let's find out, because I saw there's a 2X version of this that you can get, which is, I'm pretty sure, specific for this lens, but let's just see. It's the TC14. Let me, uh, let's go pull this up on the B&H webpage. So the TC14, let's just copy this. And I think you can buy this on its own. Well, I don't know if you can. Let's see here. So there's the 2X1. Okay, so the 2X1 is compatible with the 200 28. I'm going to assume that that means that the 1.4X, especially since it's not being sold separately, is only 
available with the uh, with the uh, only compatible with the 200 2A. I think that is a safe assumption. So this is cool. You can get a 200 a 2x adapter as well. Man, that'd make it an 800 millimeter lens. Whoa, that'd be slick. Um, so that is, I believe, the, I know that in the manual it says it only works with this lens, but I don't know if that's something that can change. It has quite a large protrusion. Let's get this into the shot here. You can see how far this sticks up. So obviously any lens this goes on would have to have that much of an inset inside of it, which isn't a big ask. I think a lot of lenses, a lot of long lenses do, but it is definitely designed for this lens. I think that it would be a bad idea to try and put it on any other lens. That's what I think. That's what I'm going to stick with that one. So thank you again very, very much, Jim. That is very, very much appreciated. I love it. All right. Uh, now let's go back to punch in function. We talked about that. Nice cheetah picks. Thank you. Burns Tech, don't forget the value for value plug. Oh, thank you, Burns. I appreciate the reminder. Well, I'll just pull it up right now. I wasn't going to do that one as well because I talked about India and Chicago. But if you did learn something today, then by all means, please do consider visiting photojoseph.com slash support. Lots of different ways to support via Patreon, PayPal, shopping at the affiliate store, watching my good old training on linda.com. Or of course, you can hire me directly for uh, just about anything photography related. We're going to put the photography related in there as well. Um, thank you very much. Value for value. If you gained value, please consider putting value back. It keeps us on the air. Burns says, GH5 has that annoying ass blue light. Yes, it does. Why do manufacturers use that blue LED? Use a soft, dim white LED. It's so much better on these. I know. I don't, I don't know why. That is a very bright blue light, but now we can turn it off. I actually had on my GH5 for a while a piece of gaff tape covering it, which I punched a pinhole through so that I could still, still see if the light was on. Uh, but now we'll be able to just turn that off, which is super nice. Burns, yes, I was referring to any physical switch for a commonly switch function, especially on the lens. Like you said, saves the hassle of menu settings. Absolutely. Love having switches. That's one of the cool things about the G9 as well is you have this extra switch down here, extra little function button. If you haven't seen this, let's see, I don't need that anymore. Um, let's get that up here on the close-up. This little function switch down there is unique to the G9. I have mine programmed to go into night mode. So if you push that, everything goes red. It's uh, it's great. I just I love having that, that function on there. Um, let's see here. Matt Diver said, any noticeable quality reduction with the 1.4X converter? Is it a special one or available separately? So we answer the available separately part. It is not noticeable quality reduction. Uh, not that I noticed. You, It's not as shallow depth of field, of course. But let's, let's just do this. Here, here's what we'll do. We'll go to the Lightroom pictures of the bear, since I took the exact same picture. Oh, this is not, oh, this is Lightroom, Mo, uh, what do you call it? CC, I can't do a split side by side with this version of Lightroom, but let me go. Incidentally, so this is supposed to be 100%. It's definitely not, I think Lightroom is confused because it's a retina screen, but it's not displaying retina, so it's only showing this half the size. But um, yeah, so there's 100% with the 1.4X. Will it stay centered? There's 100% without. I can't really get it in the same position there. It, it just keeps moving the shot. Anyway, um, I'm not, oops, wrong way. I'm not seeing anything. I mean, it's, it is super sharp. So again, that's the 200 on its own. That's the 200 with the 1.4X. If I zoom out of this, oh, it's the wrong button. Um, let's see here. I always forget the keyboard shortcuts for this thing. It's different than standard Lightroom. Let's do, let me do this. Let me uncrop it just to, yeah, so you, you can see I, I only cropped the top and bottom off of this. So, yeah, I, I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing any extra vignetting. It's, and there might be a little focus vignetting around the edges. I, I haven't noticed any, but overall, it's, it's an impressive teleconverter. I think it has worked. I think it was working very, very well. Again, you drop from F2.8 to F4, understandable. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, that's really nice. Ah, all righty. Mm -hmm. Sutter says, is it possible to save camera settings to the second card, having two inserted, so that when the first one is formatted, save profiles, save on the second one? When you save the profile settings, I don't remember if it asks you which card you want to save it to. That's a funny question, actually. Um, let me see. So now I need this back in here. I don't recall what the options are. So let's find out. All right, uh, bring up the menu system, and let's see if I can remember where this is. It is under here, I believe. Uh, which page is it on? Because you want to watch it. Monitor, night mode, monitor display, monitor luminous, language, double slot. Um, oh, yeah. It's not in there. Where is it? 
I, I think it's there. I think I probably just rolled right past it. Somebody's watching me going, you passed it, you idiot. Trial date, Bluetooth, wireless connection lamp. See, that's the function, incidentally, that's got to add it to the GH5 or will be added to the GH5, the ability to turn that wireless function lamp off. Thank you. Economy, monitor display, LVF night mode, monitor, monitor. Status, backlight, eye sensor, battery use, USB, T language, language, version display, folder file settings, double soft function, number reset, reset. Fix refresh, sensor cleaning. Okay, apparently it's not where it is. No matter how much you use these things, you can never remember where everything is. Let's try it under others. Profile setup. Here's what I'm going to guess. I can never find these things. It's just, okay, here's a, here's, how would this be, how cool would this be for a, um, a, uh, a, a addition to the menu system? To be able to search, you know, like on your iPhone, you pull down and you start, like when you're in the menu settings, you pull down, you can start typing in something and it finds likely matches. But typing is kind of a pain on here. What if I had a voice thing? And you could say, save memory settings. And it searched and it like a Google search and it gave you the most likely results. Wouldn't that be cool? A guy can dream. Where is this function? Monitor auto reviews. I don't think it's in here. I, I must have gone past it earlier. Like a complete noob profile setup. It's not profile. Nope, not profile. There's people probably telling me where it is on here. Um, oh, people saying, yes, they want the search. I know search would be a, a wonderful, wonderful thing in here. Oh, I just... Dial setting, joystick setting, operation, video touch, auto review. Well, maybe we're getting to it. Uh, Constant review, peaking, histogram. There's so much control in here. So many things you can do. It is really, really insane. Okay, I've I don't even know where it is. I'm just completely lost. I'm sure it's on this first. One. Last time I'm looking. If you're bored by now, I'll I'll put a timestamp earlier <laughs> in the recorded version of this because I know it's in here. Monitor display, LVF display, night mode, monitor, monitor. You know what's going to happen is I'm going to be editing the video. I'm going to look back and go, oh, it was right there. Battery, TV, language, version display, folder file, settings, double slot. Oh, it's right there. I did go past it. It's just not highlighted. Why is it not highlighted? Save, restore camera settings. Interesting. I wonder if that's because there's only, aha, it's because there is only a card in slot two. So that's what's going on. That's why I didn't see it, because it was grayed out. Okay, so that answers your question. No, apparently you can only save the settings into slot one. But here is, so what he's asking, this camera, along with the GH5, GH5S, have dual SD card slots. With all of those cameras, you can save your custom settings. You're basically your entire camera, camera setup. You can save it to a file on the SD card. It's fantastic. So if you want to have multiple setups, let's say you have a completely massively configurated camera for sports shooting and then another one for landscape, real estate, whatever. You can have these different profile settings that you can then call up at any time. So way more than just saving a couple of the C modes, you can save the entire camera in a setting file. You save that to the internal SD card. The question from Serge was, can you save it to slot to a card in slot two? The answer is an apparent no, since it, the, mention, the function wasn't even available because I only have a card in slot two right now. I don't have a card in slot one. So you have to put the card in slot one. His concern is that if you reformat the card, you're gonna lose the settings. Yes, you are. Here's what I recommend. I recommend that you take an old SD card that you're not using, like a little one, little four or eight gig card, something you got laying around, and use that, label that one camera settings. And just use that card as your dedicated card for saving your settings on there. That's what I'd recommend. Then you don't ever have to worry about shooting over it, accidentally erasing it. You always know which card it's on. It's a dedicated card. Stick a label on it and make sure you always use that one for the settings. That's what I do. That's what I recommend you do. Sweet. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, Bart, need to add search function to the menus. Yeah, people say Burns wants search too. That would, be, that would be great. It's just there's so much in here. We need search just like we do on the iPhone. Great Bart, Bart says, great minds think alike. Yes, they do. Okay. Uh, oh, that's what I was saying. I think both converters were, this, were discussed with Sean Robinson's during Hugh Brownstone's video about the G9 and 200 millimeter lens. I think something was said about the use with other lenses eventually. Oh, okay. Cool. That'd be neat. I mean, if it physically fits, it'd be awesome to be able to do that, right? That'd be nice. Okay. Uh, that's it. We are wrapping this up. Thank you, everybody. That was a good long show. Thanks for the two year anniversary coming in to watch that one live. That was fun. Um, and, uh, and, and and joining me for this lovely event here. Just talking about the 200, the two, I like 200 year anniversary, two year anniversary, 200 year anniversary, we're talking about the two millimeter lens. Aha, get that one. That's what we'll be doing in 200 years. Wow. No, two year anniversary, 200 mil, F2.8 lens, lots of twos in there, all rounded out perfectly. 
If, uh, if you didn't watch the main show, go watch that. Uh, if you made it this far, congratulations. And we have one more show this week. That'll be on Friday. And then next Monday is a holiday. So we will not be doing a show on Monday. We'll be back on the Wednesday. But we'll see you on Friday. No worries about that. All right, guys. Thank you very much, everybody. Great for, uh, great for having you here. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.